July 30th, 1942, President Franklin Delano Roosevelt signed a bill creating a women's auxiliary agency in the Navy known as the Women's Accepted for Volunteer Emergency Service, or WAVES for short. Women served in armed conflicts long before the establishment of the waves. During the War of 1812 and the United States Civil War, women regularly could be seen passing food and water around, tending equipment, and servicing wounded, all in an effort to make the U.S. military successful in its endeavors. Mildred McAfee, on leave as president of Wellesley College, became the first director of the waves. She was tasked with recruiting female personnel for shore assignments so that officers and men could be released for sea duty. Female officers entered fields previously held by men, such as medicine and engineering. Enlisted women served as clerical workers, parachute riggers, aviation mechanics, photographers, control tower operators, intelligent personnel, and more. The waves would peak at nearly 90,000 members during World War II, serving at 900 stations in the United States and Hawaii. Seven wave officers and six enlisted women would die during the war. Upon demobilization in 1946, many waves were acknowledged for their contributions to the country, including Captain McAfee, who was awarded the Distinguished Service Medal for her efforts as director of the waves. In 1948, the Women's Armed Services Integration Act, Public Law 625, was signed into law by President Harry S. Truman, allowing women to serve in the regular Army or Navy on a permanent basis. The Navy swore in its first six women enlistees on July 7, 1948. We salute these dedicated, selfless women who make our military stronger and continue to serve and protect our country with the highest honor. And now we know. And knowing is half the battle.